Previously unknown oxygen source discovered at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. New research has shown that potato-sized clumps of various minerals, called polymetallic concretions, scattered across the ocean floor are producing oxygen. The process occurs at a depth of 4,000 meters below the surface, in total darkness and without the help of living organisms, challenging our understanding of how life on Earth evolved. Formations called polymetallic nodules or manganese nodules are pieces of rock composed of various elements. They lie on the ocean floor at depths of 4,000 to 6,000 meters below the surface. These nodules, which range in size from tiny specks to the size of an average potato, contain large amounts of manganese, iron, nickel, cobalt, copper, and rare earth elements, which is why they were considered a source of raw materials. But it turns out they are a source of oxygen. This unexpected discovery challenges the common belief that photosynthetic organisms are required to produce oxygen for breathing. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Nature Geoscience. A spontaneous reaction quietly taking place in the dark depths of the ocean, discreetly produces oxygen, without the participation of life. The discovery of dark oxygen, as scientists have dubbed the oxygen produced on the ocean floor, challenges long-held assumptions that photosynthetic organisms such as plants and algae produce oxygen on Earth. For oxygenic life to have arisen on the planet, there had to be oxygen, and we know that oxygen generation on Earth began with photosynthetic organisms, said Andrew Sweetman of the Scottish Association for Marine Science, SAMS. But now we know that oxygen is produced in the deep sea, where there is no light. I think we need to re-ask ourselves about where oxygenic life could have started, he added. The polymetallic nodules that produce this oxygen contain metals such as cobalt, nickel, copper, lithium, and manganese, which are critical elements used in batteries, said Franz Geiger of Northwestern University, a CEO author of the study. Several large mining companies are currently aiming to extract these valuable elements from the seabed from a depth of 4,000 to 6,000 meters below the surface. We need to think about how to extract these materials so as not to deplete the source of oxygen for deep sea life, he added. The discoveries were made during a research expedition on a ship in the Pacific in the so-called clarion Clipperton zone located about 3,000 kilometers west of Mexico. During sampling from the bottom, oxygen was detected. At first, the team of researchers assumed that their equipment was broken. When we first got the data, we thought the sensors were faulty, said Sweetman, adding that no studies had reported oxygen production in the deep sea. The researchers used a different method, but it also indicated the detection of oxygen. When both methods gave the same result, we knew we were dealing with something groundbreaking, he emphasized. Scientists wondered where the detected oxygen came from. Geiger discovered in a study a few years ago that rust combined with salt water can generate electricity. This led scientists to wonder whether polymetallic nodules lying on the seabed were generating enough electricity to produce oxygen. This chemical reaction is part of the electrolysis process of seawater, the splitting of water into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity. To find out, some of the polymetallic nodules taken from the seabed were sent to Gagger's lab at Northwestern University. The tests showed that a voltage of just 1.5 volts, the same as a typical AA battery, was enough to split seawater. On the surface of individual nodules, scientists recorded a voltage of about 0.95 volts, but when many nodules are clustered together, the voltage can be much higher, as in the case of batteries connected in series. 
looks like we've discovered a natural geo battery. These geo batteries are the basis for a possible explanation for the production of dark oxygen in the ocean, Geiger said. Scientists agree that the mining industry should consider the discovery before planning deep sea mining operations. Geiger says the total mass of polymetallic nodules in the Clarion Clipperton zone alone is enough to meet global demand for decades. But he emphasizes that mining is associated with environmental degradation. In 2016 and 2017, marine biologists visited sites where minerals were mined in the 1980s and found that even bacteria had not returned to those areas, Geiger said. However, in regions where mining was not carried out, marine life has flourished. It is still not known why such dead zones persist for decades. However, this raises a big question mark about mining, because the diversity of fauna on the ocean floor in areas rich in nodules is higher than in the most diverse tropical rhine forests, he added.